Okay, verifying a trigonometric identity. So as we get going on this, you want to pick out the more difficult looking side and then do some algebra, um, use some identities to make this look just like the other side. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the left hand side. And the first thing I notice is we have this negative hanging out inside of a sine function. So I want to get rid of that negative. So to do so, what I'm going to use is an even odd identity. So I'm going to bring along the one plus sine of x. And then I'm going to replace this with one minus sine of a positive x on the inside here. All right, to do so, we're allowed to get rid of negatives on the inside of trigonometric functions utilizing even odd identities. So whenever I replace something in, making it look like something different, I want to use or at least uh, verify which identity I'm utilizing to get rid of, say, this negative on the inside and replace it. You can move it in front using an even odd identity for sine. All right, next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is multiply this out. So go first outer inner last. I know it looks more difficult with the signs hanging out, but I can go first one times one, outer one times negative sine of X. So minus sine of X. The inner is gonna be positive sine of X times one. So that's plus sine of X. And then the last we have sine of X multiplied by negative sine of X. So that's positive times a negative makes negative. Sine times sine makes sine squared. All right, now the middle two terms you can look at here, we have subtracting a sine of X and adding a sine of X. Basic algebra says you're combining like terms. Those get to combine together and make zero sines of X's. So where we're at now is we still have one minus sine squared of X. So you may notice whenever we have a square, it's not a bad idea to just off to the side here, I'm gonna bring up the Pythagorean identity. So with the Pythagorean identity, what we can do is we can say, well, sometimes we say that's cosine squared of X plus sine squared of X equals one. Whenever you have something squared, sine squared or cosine squared, it's a good idea to refer back to this identity. So what we can do is we can simply rearrange our Pythagorean identity, and we want to see one minus sine squared. So to get there, we can move the sine squared to the other side by subtracting it. So we can say, well, cosine squared of X equals one minus sine squared of X. So subtracting the sine squared, moving it over to the right hand side. So where you see a one minus sine squared of X, you can replace with a cosine squared of X. And again, this was the Pythagorean identity. Shorthanded it there, abbreviated. Um, but that's what we wanted it to look like. We wanted to end up with cosine squared of X. That's what the right hand side is here. Um, so we've accomplished our goal. We've ended up where we wanted to. Hopefully it makes sense as I substitute it in, replace the negative X on the inside of this sign using even odd. The algebra makes sense and then rearranging the Pythagorean identity. All right, good luck. Take some practice, but replace everything with sines and cosines if it's not already and work from there. Good luck.